you doing Justin here today we are going to have a look at looping shape of you by Ed Sheeran I'm going to try and take you through each of the different layers and a few different options but this really should just be a starting point I want to give you like the basic bones of what to do how to do it the things to look out for when you're making this kind of a loop arrangement it doesn't work for every tune of course you need something with same chords and same kind of grooves going right the way through the whole tune which there is actually a surprisingly high number of tunes that do that kind of thing uh, this is I think a great starter so I'm using here my Boss RC3 loop station but you can use the same thing with any looper you just need to make sure that you know how to start stop and create an overdub uh, potentially using it for removing layers as well so the first thing to start off with is making sure that you can get a rhythm looping successfully now it's all about making sure that you start and stop on beat one with the looper that's really a key thing here particularly for that first one I often listen back to the, the rhythm loop before I add much more stuff because if the rhythm loop is not quite perfectly synced it's going to make the whole thing a little bit messy now Ed Sheeran does some pretty fancy stuff with his loops. Uh, that's his thing, so he's fantastic at it. If you're new to this, I'd recommend starting off with a real simple little loop like I've done here. Now, I like using my fingers for this kind of thing. I'm using the front pickup of the guitar. Um, you could, you know, again, this is just what I'm doing for this one, but you could definitely be changing it up depending on the sort of sound that you want to create yourself. Um, a really nice kind of starting groove is just to be playing the thicker strings on beat one, and then either one finger or a few fingers hitting down on, you're covering all the strings here with the left hand, just to get a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Really keeping it nice and simple. And knowing that you're going to be hitting the looper on beat one, it's a two bar loop. So you're gonna hit the looper, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then hit that loop again, and hopefully it'll sync up, three, that's yeah, not bad. Now, I kind of broke the golden rule there, which is to try and play a bit beforehand. So I've just cleared that looper by double tapping and holding down the pedal, uh, holding down the button. What I would normally recommend that you do is you play the groove first, especially if you're struggling with getting this thing in time, is playing it, two, three, four, one, two. Making sure you're constant with your tempo. Hit it on beat one. And again, 
I wouldn't play on beat one as well because you, you're much more likely to get like a a flam. That one's okay. It's a little bit hesitant. There's a couple of times, so I'd probably do that one again. I'm pretty fussy about it. Ideally, you want to practice it so it's like right every time, but especially while I'm trying to teach and do all of this stuff, uh, think about a lot of other things at the same time, they tend to go a little bit wobbly. But anyway, let's get the groove again. Three, four, one, two, three. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think this one should be felt all right. Yeah, that's good. So that would be your first step, is trying to get that rhythm so it's nice and consistent. If you don't get that, it's going to make life very difficult, okay? So that's a really important first step. So let's call that layer one, would just be a basic groove like that. The next thing you probably want to add in is the bass. Now the bass line for this one, again, I'd be using my front pickup. I want to play fairly delicately or use my thumb to get a nice round sound to make the kind of layers a little bit more distinct. The pattern here, it's the note, the chords, actually I should mention, in fact I'll stop that for a second. The chords for this song are A minor, D minor, F and G for the whole tune. It's the same sequence all of the way through. So for the bass part, that's the kind of rhythm that's used on the song. It's the count of it is one E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three E and a four and one E and a two and three E and a four and again with those sort of things you, you can count it if you want and learn the kind of the proper maths of it, but it, I think I think it'd be easier just to listen and hear that one that's do 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 dum bum. So that would be the next thing to add in. So you want to start the loop, and then you have to press the pedal again to make it overdub, starting in the right place. And then press the pedal off again to stop it overdubbing. Last note, the little bass one, I did the slide down. It's not quite as synced up as I might have liked, but it'll do for now for the lesson. Or, actually, I should demonstrate this anyway, it's a good chance. If you double click and hold, sorry, if you click and hold, not double click and hold, just click and hold, it undoes the last layer. Okay, most looper pedals will do that same thing. So now I can have another go at doing that bass and try and get that ending right. Three, four. Not the best one I've ever done, but it'll do. Again, remembering to turn the, the overdub button off if you're going to play over it. Now, there's a few different things. Actually, I'll stop it again. There's a few different approaches here that you could go for. I like putting the riff in at this point because I think the riff is pretty cool. It's, uh, of course, on the original one, it is a keyboard one, and Ed, if he's playing it, doing his looper, he goes over to the keyboard and actually plays it on the keyboard. Although I think he's playing samples of it. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but you can kind of do a nice version of that little lick. Okay, so here I'm just using 7th uh, fret on the 4th and 5th strings, then the 5th th uh, fret on the 3rd string and the 7th fret of the 4th string, so it's essentially an A minor chord and I'm just playing the 4th uh, and 5th strings, then the third, middle 2 strings, and then back to the first ones. The next chord is a D minor. So this is kind of a D minor 7, so 5th fret on the 5th string, 7th fret on the 4th string, 5th fret on the 3rd string, same pattern of doing the 4th and 5th strings, then to the middle strings and back, so now I'm going, this is an F C shaped F chord, so little finger down on the 8th fret of the 5th string, 3rd finger on the 7th fret of the 4th string, 1st finger staying on the 5th fret of the 3rd string, so now we've got A minor, D, F, now this is G, same shape as the F, moved up 2 frets, then 7th fret on the 4th uh, 4th string 7th fret and then back to the note G which is the 5th fret on the 4th string so you end up with it really slowly
Now, of course, you want to have practiced that up before you're going to have a go at popping it into the loop. But once you do that, one thing that I would recommend, actually, I forgot to do it there for the demo, is to change the sound a bit, because you don't want it all fluffy, round and woolly like you've got for the bass sound. So I'm choosing uh, a split humbucker here and the middle pick up this sound. <laughs> Now I've stopped think thinking about the notes and I'm thinking about the sound. The other thing I'm adding in is a bit of palm mute. Okay, so now let's add that little loop into the thing. So again, listening. Two, three, hit the overdub button. Here we go. the main riff there. Now, personally, if I'm playing this kind of tune as a loop, part of the reason I'm doing it is to have a bit of fun and improvise with it. This melody works really, really great using the A minor pentatonic scale for the most part. So I think it's a fun exercise anyways to try and play what Ed Sheeran is singing. So, to find a lover so the bar is where I go. Me and friends say da 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 Come over and start up a conversation with just me and just me Give it a chance now da do Girl, I really want you to know da 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 you don't have to do that. You can just improvise and jam with the A minor pentatonic scale or the C major scale if you want to explore a bit of that harmony as well. And I think that's a nice point to do it. So you've kind of got this as a whole groove. What I tend to do is flick onto the back pickup and use the humbucker. And now I've got a, got a lot thicker sound there to have a bit of an improvise with. Uh, and I think that's when you're doing these multiple layered loop things, it's important to try and keep the sounds a bit distinct. Otherwise it can just become mushy. So we've got the nice round sound for that initial kick drum, the thud. Possibly could have used a, a brighter sound for the snare, but it was okay. But definitely the front pickup for the bass sound and keeping that nice and delicate. Then try and look for another texture for the riff. In this, you know, I was using this uh, position for the middle and the split humbucker there. Um, and then taking a solo, flicking it back onto the humbucker. You know, I've, I've, my humbucker splits by using this second tone control. It's how I've got it set up, but you might have a, a different setting. It's, it's just for you to explore. And yeah, I haven't even got into using pedals yet, okay? I'm just using the one sound, the looper pedal, straight through the amp. That's it. Uh, there's a little bit of reverb, actually, on, on one of the amps. But that's, you know, that's the whole setup. You could definitely get into using a gain pedal when you're doing the improvising part. That would work. Or using a delay pedal for some of the other rhythmic things. You could get, you should get really creative with it. This is just a starting point I wanted to give you to give you some ideas of what to do. Now, um, another couple of things that you might like to try out that I think are quite fun with this particular loop. Um, if you're aware of your volume as well when you're doing your loops, um, you don't always want it to be flat out. You can play softer or turn your volume down a little bit, uh, or both. Uh, this kind of thing, there's another little, the thinnest uh, three strings on the fifth fret work really well as a little kind of a chip on beat two each time. So you end up with this. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, three, four, one, two, four, one. That can be quite a fun little loop to add. You can also have Playing power chords A, D, F, G. Now you've got something a bit more for solo. If you've done those as a loop, you can also do the press and hold. And now we've gone back again. Press and hold again. And they're gonna come back. 
Now that can be a pretty handy thing. I think it's, if you press it on beat two here. One, two, three, four. Ah, okay. I was hoping that they were gonna stop right on the beat. I need to figure out exactly where the best place. Ah, go away. Even I still have fun with the loop of the double tap. Sometimes I double tap wanting to stop the loop and start the next one and then it stops the whole loop. Ah, very frustrating. But they're great fun. And you can see with a little tool like this how much fun you can have with a, a little idea. Oh, I just realized I haven't shown you the, uh, the little outro melody riff as well, actually. Sorry, so let me take this back. Where are we now? Yeah, we haven't got the chords there. So another little layer that I think works really great is doing the ooh ah ooh ah ooh ah ooh ah. So that is which is 7th fret on the 4th string, 5th fret on the 3rd string, 7th fret, sliding from 7th to 9th, and playing it again. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and oh, 2, 3 and 4 and... I'm just adding that little... Sliding down to the 7th fret, 3rd string, and then 5th fret on the 3rd string. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and oh, Two and four and one and two and three and four e and up. Three and four and and the same riff. Works down an octave as well. And then if you want to get really clever, there's a nice harmony you can use. Fifth fret on the same rhythm each time. Fifth fret on the third string. Fifth fret on the second string. Eighth fret. Sliding up to the tenth fret. Then I'm sliding down to the 7th fret on the thinner string to the 5th fret. If we add those little layers in now, so here's the loop. 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And these adding these little textures can be so much fun. Of course, that one originally on the Ed Sheeran song is a vocal. So in that song, he's got a keyboard loop playing the, uh, you know, the little... And a vocal loop doing the ooh ah ooh ah ooh ah ooh ah plus the percussion plus he's singing. But this is the kind of thing where you can have a load of fun trying to replicate all of those things on guitar. It's such a cool little tool. Loopers are so much fun. I, I still think that they're the first pedal that people should get a hold of when they're learning guitar because it's great for developing your sense of rhythm. You really have to be solid with your timekeeping to make them work. And even though that can be a bit frustrating the first few times you have to go at doing it, you just have to stick with it and practice really thinking about one, two, three, four, getting the foot going one, two, three, four, one and really feeling where that one is you know it's a really important skill uh something that you won't really find the useful the the looper very friendly until you get that down but it is just practice it's practice doing it being you know working on getting your rhythm real solid that is the key thing and then it's just creativity I'm only really touching the surface here with sounds. A couple of things that you might like to try out is using an octave pedal for the bass part so you get that real proper heavy kind of bass sound. You might try using a synth kind of pedal in order to get a different texture going on for the rhythm. There really is a load of different stuff and we're going to be covering that more later in this little looper series. I really hope you enjoyed this. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do. There'll be extra notes over on the website with some more ideas for your loops and all that sort of stuff. So do go and check that out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.